Hi, PC Synergy here, and I want to make a video on virtual private networks and some of the advantages of them and how it works. I'm not going to explain what it is. That will be explained as I show you how to set it up on Windows 7 Professional or to allow incoming connections. The scenario is I'm set up right now on a laptop in an office with three other computers named simply Bob. Jane, Kevin, and Mary hyphen PC. I'm connected to my wireless router to wire eight seven four. I wanted to show the IP address for the first half of it, twenty four dot two two four. That will change because after I get the VPN set up, I'm going to tether a four G Motorola phone up to my laptop, disconnect this connection to the wireless router for the office and come back in through the cloud. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a remote desktop connection or just hop over to Bob PC. I'll accept the certificate and you see I'm on Bob for now. and. What I want to do is jump into network connections, delete the one that I already had, refresh, it's gone. And what you want to do here to create a connection or a VPN service, which by the way, if you look at the services running, routing and remote access routing and remote access service. So the server exists or the service exists on Windows 7 Professional. So you can set it up using Windows 7 Professional. And what you want to do is hit Alt, File, New Incoming Connection. And this screen will appear asking you who may connect to this computer. Now remember I am in the office on the office LAN and I just use remote desktop connection to show you Bob PC and how you set it up. Or I create an extra user named Sam just to show that you can create users and um, they can access that box aka PC server whatever and from here you want to click next next again and it will show you your protocol stack and with this you want to make sure that you allow an IP range to be designated to the PC or to the client that is connecting to the virtual private network or to their routing and remote access service. From here you click allow access close and if I refresh on that page I have incoming connections. Now I'm going to shut this down close that and jump back over to Jane-PC which Bob, Jane, Kevin and Mary connected in the office. And now what I want to do is disconnect from 2-wire 874 and tether the phone and this public IP address will change. In other words I will not be connected to the wireless router in the office. So I'll pause the video and come back because it takes a few minutes. Now just for the purpose of validating that I'm no longer connected to 2 wire 874 if I hover over this it shows no network access, no internet access and it is establishing a new connection to the uh, tethered 4G device. So I'll close and check to see if I have any um, connection and I do. If I type in my IP again or if I refreshed it, you'll see that it's changed. Now the first two octets or the first half of my IP address is something completely different. Now this is considered the client and I need to set up a VPN connection so that I can connect back to the office.
I could be right down the road, I could be a thousand miles away, it doesn't matter. First, open up Network and Sharing Center and click on Set up a new connection for network and then connect to the workplace. Use internet connection, type in a numerical IP address, you don't have to have a domain and you don't have to have um, Microsoft Windows Server 2003 or 2008 you don't have to have anything click don't just I'm using Windows 7 professional so click don't connect now just set it up so I can connect later there's a reason I do that and remember I set up an extra user on Bob PC that wants to you know or that may want to VPN from a coffee shop or from an airport or from a motel or hotel somewhere miles away and I'll type in the password no domain click create and I won't connect now because there's one thing that um, sometimes causes a problem If I go and check out my VPN connection properties and click on the options tab, include Windows logon domain is checked. Uncheck that if you don't have any domain. And as far as security is concerned, data encryption, we want to require encryption. Disconnect if the server declines. Type of VPN options, you'll have point to point tunneling protocol, layer two tunneling protocol with IPsec that means IP security secure socket tunneling protocol and Ike version 2. Ike version 2 is uh, for the key exchange but what will be used is point to point tunneling protocol leave it as automatic in case it needs to automatically use one or the other or more than one and click OK and by click back here now for the VPN connection I can click connect. I want to sign in as Sam, Sam Sam, and hundreds or maybe a thousand miles away and when you first connect to the uh, VPN server which is kind of a misnomer but when you first connect it takes a while it's registered on the network now and what I want to show you is that if I go back remember my IP had changed from the first one to this one and now I'm connected using VPN and if I refresh this page it will be the office public IP so that's proof that this computer the client that's connecting through VPN sees itself as part of that local area network in the office if I open up command prompt and type in the IP config. What you want to pay attention to right here is a point to point protocol adapter and the VPN connection. It's given me an internal IP address, a unique address. And I have UNC shares. In other words, I'm not in the office and I can click Bob PC and look at all the public shared folders you can add folders and delete folders and assign permissions as you want I can click on Kevin's or Mary and that that PC has uh, public shares also so now keep in mind I'm not connected to the wireless router in the office I'm miles away some of the advantages of this are one, if you are connecting securely through the internet, which is a wide area network, not a local area network, it's, an, it's tunneled. In here, there is encryption. The data is encrypted. And basically what that means is you have encrypted data, and the tunneling part means that that data is encapsulated in another packet which is called 
tunneling. So if that tunnel is broke because of a fake device in the middle, the connection is terminated. That fake device in the middle, allow me to explain. If you're at the airport or a coffee shop, you can have what's called an evil twin attack. They will kick you off your connection. Say you're at Starbucks and your connection is Starbucks. And they'll kick you off of that. They'll deauthorize you. And they will create on their machine a wireless access point that has the same name. Your computer will connect to it and everything, all the data that you send will go through their machine and allow them to look through the data. VPN is the solution to this security vulnerability, at least one of them. So those are the advantages to VPN and to add to that, if you had an office, a small office or home office, and you had employees that work there and say some of them were a little bit more detail oriented and uh, neat and uh, follow procedure a little bit more than others like say Mary saves her files in corresponding folders that make sense but yet Kevin just saves his files everywhere it's hard to consolidate all the files in the one and Furthermore, when you go to back up all those files or when someone else goes to back up all those files, it's hard because they're all over the place and some may not be backed up, which is a disadvantage to your business. So that's VPN and thanks for watching. Hope you learned something and stay tuned for the next video.